Okay, so I'm Leo Sipolina Thomas, and I was the coordinator of the NVQ training program at MOLA. This is one of our trainees, now archaeologists, Matt Hoskins, who's going to be doing the latter part of the presentation. So, on to the nice scripted bit. Um, due to a healthy work program forecast for 2016, um, MOLA endeavoured to create a six month archaeological traineeship with a primary focus on practicality and the skills of field excavation. Uh, acting upon MOLA's ability to run the NVQ trainee scheme wholly internally and give back to the London community uh, as per the charity status of the company. Uh, this type of programme was generated to uh, bring fully trained local field archaeologists with a personal connection to the city and further means that MOLA can utilise them much better than importing archaeologists into the capital, which is very, very difficult to do, find housing and such like that, or further afield trying to get CSES qualifications not needed on the mainland um, of Europe. And over the course of the six months, hopefully with the NVQ to legitimise it, the experience and the skills that will be uh, given to them um, they are no longer limited to MOLA. They are able to go out into any other unit, but also go uh, into any other aspect of commercial archaeology as well. Because, um, as we know, it's a fickle thing. Um, it was threefold in the approach, as I've slightly mentioned before. Uh, the field work skills and training, and the experience working on commercial sites with uh, current archaeologists. It's also giving the NVQ to legitimise the training programme that was being run, um, as well as the trial used by MOLA of the Badger Skills Passport, um, which I believe the IFA is, is backing. Um, the advert was uh, pressed rather highly on the MOLA website and was largely restricted to the London area. I know it's awful, I apologise for the opening couple of lines. I did not write it and I had nothing to do with it. Um, the, the adverts were largely London centric in terms of uh, adverts were put into publications such as East End Life uh, for the East End of London, um, lovely paper, lots of people uh, read it and got interested in it that way, as well as job websites uh, Indeed, which I hadn't heard of, but I've heard of the ones that it spread to from it. Um, while it was actively kept from Badger, because Badger is uh, mainly somewhere where people with degrees go to find the work after leaving university and we wanted to keep it from that so that we didn't get a flood of applications. Um, <laughs> which led to the 200 applications that we received. <laughs> massive number. Um, most of which, pardon me, had to be thrown out almost immediately because they were from people who had degrees in archaeology or were not based in London. And this was a London-based project. I'm getting kind of deeper and deeper as it's going wrong. Ah, um, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Should be okay. Um, yes, so not being resident in London. Um, these people, this lovely group, minus one because I forgot to get a photo when she came back. Um, examinations in English, Maths and Perception uh, were administered to 40 invited applicants um, across a series of uh, test days from varied backgrounds, um, different employment beforehand, as well as an age range from 18 all the way to 67. Um, none with any uh, history of an archaeological degree at higher education or below. Um, they were then put through once the candidates were sifted through various parts of the MOLA organisation, being marked in, uh, by different people, the editors for English because they're grounded it, of course, and HR for maths, which I'm sure we all know works out well. Um, the, uh, they were, we then had 17 candidates who were invited to a series of interview days um, headed by myself and Dave Sankey, the coordinators of the programme, um, of which uh, we ran group and individual interviews, uh, basically just to gauge who we wanted. And uh, from this, we had to drop five, and, you know, conversely to our lovely... Uh, advert a call for 10, we wanted 12, might as well better the, uh, the prospects for us. Um, we had eight women and four men. Um, the same ratio was represented in uh, some having degrees, nothing in archaeology, 
and those without degrees at all, four people, as well as ending up with the full age range of 18 to 67. Um, so the programme that we actually ran, uh, following a two-day standard molar company induction, health and safety inductions, and manual handling training, uh, they were all very glad, I can assure you, to enter the classroom element of the programme. And uh, as the traineeship was primarily geared towards developing field archaeologists, um, there was an emphasis, mainly by us, they liked a lot more of the classroom stuff, we didn't, um, to have a practical skills training, which led to much less use of PowerPoint and a, gr a greater want to get them out into the field. It's basic, they're not really looking at anything, but this is the park, Shoreditch Park, just across the way from our office. and. When the weather permitted, we went out as much as we could and we did the practical elements. We did planning, grid layout, photography, the use of the dumpy matters amply demonstrating there. And I think you can see me in the background, though no one wants that too much. Um, the more traditional uh, classroom teaching, there we are, looking lovely, um, took place in terms of informal lectures and uh, practical sessions, handling fines, as well as just open discussions between um, between all of us. And the lectures went from things like basic uh, archaeological period chronology um, all the way to the development of archaeological practice through time. Um, all written by us, it was, it was a darling experience. And this combination of indoor uh, lectures and the outdoor practicals uh, lasted approximately two weeks before we could start our training excavation, a place called Allen Gardens near Brick Lane which began with a one by two metre test pit. This one's been stripped a little bit further back. Um, and that's another one of ours, Josh, cracking bloke. Um, and the excavation started as one by two metre test pits and one of them came down straight onto structural remains and the other just shows a series of three large dump deposits, largely uninteresting crud stuff. Uh, so we very quickly, once they're completed, opened it up to a 10 by four, which was, it was going all right. During the excavation, we found out that it was part of an 18th century, 19th century, 19th century school, um, as was indicated by various tablets and things like this. Lovely gridded line. Don't quite remember these myself, but uh, I'm sure there's some people who, well, maybe not in this room. You're all lovely young folk, aren't you? So, uh, excellent. Yes, but there were beautiful little pieces like that, definitely schooly related. Inkwells, other such beauty. Um, and. Through this, they were exposed to the uh, physicality and the physical manner of excavation, as well as the breadth of recording techniques that we possibly could. At least we got some masonry. We didn't just have to fill out the white context sheets. Um, unfortunately, though, it was during this uh, portion of the traineeship that we lost two of them uh, due to circumstances outside of the program. Um, and it left these, these 10 to they should all be wearing helmets, but we'll, we'll skirt past it, um, to go on and face the world of commercial archaeology. Uh, so, from there, um, relative success of the uh, training excavation, they all did pretty damn well, none of them broke too much, um, and so they were divided into smaller teams and brought into the Molar office to experience uh, the office-based activities that we could. Um, this being enviro processing, finds processing, entering them, going through the archive process of a single site each, just to really show the post ex element to them, which really wasn't demonstrated on site, obviously. Um, other than that, we had them do various tasks to fulfill the NVQ and create the portfolio of work that would latterly be submitted and give them that validation of the whole course and training scheme. Um, through this time, we also had specialist interaction with uh, the osteologists, as well as I believe standing buildings and a few of our other specialists, um, where they worked uh, for a half day or day long seminars in terms of it, including one, uh, this is where he was drip fed onto site, um, where we did short bursts. I kind of forgot the ordering of that. Um, he was drip fed onto sites, uh, small scale, with very few other molar archaeologists on site so that there's still the comfort blanket of myself and Dave, uh, the coordinators being directly with them, even getting them used to uh, commercial sites and environments. Uh, 
Then we ran a one day uh, geophysical course to really allow them to get the full uh, range of things that you can do within commercial archaeology. Um, he was absolutely freezing that day, so uh, I was standing there in a very large coat, but there we go. Um, and doing this, uh, we're using a piece of kit, very commonly used, Bartington. So it all went rather well in the grand scheme of things. Um, and then after the Christmas break, we had the trainees inserted onto many commercial projects around the city of London, working again very closely with the coordinators, but now interacting with the other molar archaeologists. And it was over time that those molar archaeologists were buddied up with our trainees so that they could uh, you know, experience them. And we slowly rolled back the safety blanket of myself and Dave, the coordinators, constantly being the ones that the, arch that the trainees were rushing to, almost as archaeologists. Good on you. Um, and it was slowly removed. We reduced it to begin with, and then we removed ourselves altogether. Uh, but obviously staying in contact with the buddies and uh, the site supervisors. Um, after the removal of us, uh, it was then possible to start rotating some of them around, uh, going short spells in the office and then back into the field to fulfill some of the NVQ tasks that we hadn't been able to do earlier, such as deciphering this, which is absolutely darling and horrible. I've never had so much trouble zeroing a machine. But there you go, it's London. And it's also a bomb site. Two large bombed out buildings, how fun. Um, at the conclusion of the traineeship, eight of them were offered contracts. Seven were taken up, and the other expressed an interest in coming back, but she had some personal uh, stuff to do first. Commitments, I believe it was an art show uh, that she's got running over summer. Fantastic for her. Hopefully she can come back. Um, two unsuccessful candidates were briefed by management, as well as uh, myself and Dave, um, to basically express that the physicality that hadn't really been present in the training program and they kept up largely on site but speaking to the supervisors it was that others were compensating they were working harder to try and provide it and the physicality of it was just not sustainable for them um, which was a problem uh, you will hear from him in a moment I'll shut up very soon I <laughs> promise um, but I'd just like to mention that the ones who have taken up the contracts have all been now fully integrated onto sites, um, either the Sugar Key site, which most of them trained on and were fed through uh, the main element of their on-site training. Um, we now have one that's present on a, a body site just at the south of the river, um, as well as one who was nagging me this morning about getting uh, her induction done for the site that I will be joining her tomorrow um, up in Shoreditch. And so far, all of the reports that I've had from my colleagues have been exemplary about them. I mean, they're still learning, but they're getting it on and they're getting, getting done. So I'm going to hand you over to him. He will, I'm sure, be a lot more coherent um, as soon as he takes the little microphone. Thank you. There you are. Um, my name is Matt, and I'm just going to explain about why I decided to get into the archaeology programme. Um, ever since I was a child, digging up bits of coffee mug and in the playground with a stick, I have wanted to be an archaeologist. All through my childhood, I was, it was my default answer when asked what I wanted to be when I grew up. Unfortunately, as I got older, I was encouraged to follow a different academic path which led me to art college, though I never completed it, and ultimately became a pastry chef. Um, I worked in hotels for three years, gaining different skills and experience in the catering industry, but I never really felt like it was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, I've always had a keen interest in history and I take part in Roman reenactments um, and my dream of becoming an archaeologist soon resurfaced. Because I had no A-levels and my original plan was to work part times in kitchens while I took an access course to gain entry into university, this wasn't possible when doing a job that demanded 60 plus hours a week. Uh, so I decided to take drastic measures and under the certain circumstances I was in, I just quit my job. Um, I was accepted into Tower Hamlets College on an access course into humanities with the, um, with the hope to go to university the year after. 
Um, unfortunately, the course I was accepted on got cancelled at the last minute, so I was left with not much time to look for another place to enrol. Uh, during this time, I'd been volunteering for MOLA, working one day a week in the archive department, which I really enjoyed, and as a Roman enthusiast and reenactor, it was really good to be able to see the real artefacts behind what I use on a regular basis. Um, it was a few months after volunteering um, that I saw the advert for the MOLA traineeship. My aunt had seen the article in the East End Life newspaper and asked if I was interested, which I definitely was. Um, it was an opportunity that seemed to come at the perfect time and it almost seemed too good to be true, but I applied anyway. Um, I was soon invited to come along and take part in a few assessments, but being dyslexic and having a really bad history of exams, I didn't think that I'd get selected. But luckily I received an email a few months later, a few weeks later, um, to inform me that I'd been invited for an interview. I was, uh, a few days after the interview, um, I, and a few days before I had college enrolment, I had a phone call from Leo offering me the place on the trainee scheme. Um, there were 12 of us all together, all with varied life experiences and level, level of skill. Some had volunteered for MOLA before and others had degrees and specialisms in other areas, but some like myself had no degree at all. Um, as a group, we all seemed to fit together really well and we all learned under, at a steady pace under the guidance of Dave and Leo. Uh, the first few weeks were mainly office based, with a few days spent in a nearby park learning how to use a dumpy level and how to draw plans and sections and how to fill out context sheets. The next six weeks were spent on our own training excavation at Allen Gardens, a park near Spitalfields, where we learned how to use hand tools and basic ex excavation techniques. While, then, uh, while excavating the remains of a Victorian school. Although I woke up every morning with each muscle in my body aching, as soon as I got the hang of it, and it, I enjoyed every moment of my first investigation. We then moved on to commercial sites, and I got moved to Sugar Key. And it was extremely different to the training dig. When you walk onto a building site for the first time and there's machines and loud noises everywhere, it's quite overwhelming. And the speed of excavation was a lot faster than what we'd been used to at Allen Gardens but it didn't take long to soon cope with the distractions and get into the hang of it. We were also given the chance to try different areas of archaeology. Sorry, that's us at Allen Gardens. Um, we were also given the chance to, to, to try different areas of archaeology, as well as being part of the field team. We were given an introduction into standing buildings at St Dunstan's Church in Stepney by James Wright. Oh, this, is, this is completely out of order. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, by James Wright who um, we had specialist talks from the osteology team and a talk about landscape walkover surveys we spent time in finds processing enviro and archiving teams and we were also given full access to the MOLA office and we were able to visit other archives such as the London Metropolitan and Tower Hamlet's local library in order to complete excavation, uh, post excavation research for Allen Gardens these experiences helped us better understand the archaeological process from field excavation to archive. Um, to give back to the local community, we decided to hold an open day during the Allen Gardens excavation. To advertise this, we took part in school assemblies um, and a presentation in a local school. Um, the open day took place around Halloween, where we were invited, where there were historical characters, which was me and Jan dressed up, um, and Halloween and Mola themed cupcakes, which Mola cupcakes. <laughs> um, uh, there were different activities for children and adults to take part in, ranging from pot washing and colouring in, as well as giving them the chance to watch a live excavation of their local area. It also gave us the experience for, of public outreach. During the traineeship, ship, we were given the chance to complete an MVQ and skills passport. These were fairly easy to obtain at first, but as the traineeship kicked in and we started working on commercial sites, it became quite difficult to keep on top of. Um, but when I handed in my MVQ, sorry, You've got two minutes. Though. Pardon? You've got two minutes. Okay. Um, when, when I handed in that's the nonsense. I don't know why it's on there now. Um, when I handed in my MVQ, it gave me a real sense of accomplishment, knowing how much I'd put into it to complete it. I'm really grateful to Mola, especially Dave Sankey, Leo, and Sadie Watson for um, who managed to train us, mentor us all to a very high standard where we're now all able to fit into the field team as real members of staff. I still feel I have a lot to learn, but the process is no longer daunting and I wake up happier every day knowing I can finally go to a job that I, that I love. The traineeship has given me access to archaeology without the four year long process of going to college and university, which I may not have been able to afford, 
and given me opportunities that very few have been able to experience. I feel as though many doors have been opened for my future. Well, that's that should be. <laughs> oh. I feel as though many doors have been opened for my future, and working with Mola has inspired me to take an open university degree. Although the reality of archaeology is very different to what I and most of the trainees believed it would be, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love being able to say with pride that I'm an archaeologist, although I still don't quite believe it, and I hope to remain within the profession for a long time. Sorry for my nerves. <laughs>